Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed working on that. In Python 2, there is a built-in function reduce. We didn't learn reduce. It was in Python 2 as a functional programming built-in function. But it was decided that it wasn't useful. I don't know why. But they moved it into a library called Funk Tools, import reduce. So what reduce is is a function that takes in two arguments. It takes in the name of another function and then a sequence. I'm going to go back to some Python 2 material to talk about it. It's going to call that function putting in the first two items from your sequence. The answer is going to come back and go right in again to the function and with the next item. What gets returned is again the first argument with the next element in the sequence. Let's look here. Here we have a range from 1 to 11. I'll make it a list here. Add gets called with the first two elements of the list. Then what got returned was a 3. So it got called with the next element of the list, which is also a 3. That gave us 6. That 6 also got put into add with the next element, which is a 4, which gave us a 10, which was added then to the 5, which gave us a 15, which was added then to the 6, which gave us a 21, etc. Okay, that's what reduce does, and here I, I'm reminding you of a lambda, which maybe is easier to read and write, and very useful when you only need it once. There it is. Should remind you that I could use sum on that range to get the very same thing. Let's go back and look at that game dealer class so that we know what we're testing. The game dealer class has a deal hand. The game dealer initializer takes in a number of players and a number of cards, and then it's going to deal hands, which is to give each player that number of cards. We had a little problem when we're trying to test it. Notice that it has a magic string that does a string version of a report of the players and hands. Well, we in our testing wish we had the list not the string that is the join of the list. We need the real list. One technique would be to parse the list from the string, but that's hard. So let's instead make another class, a reporting dealer, which inherits from the game dealer. So it's everything that is the game dealer, but also it has a report that gives us the list of the hands of the players. I did not make a setup. Following the example from the lecture, I might have put this line 12 in my setup that I make a whole deck. But I thought it was silly in the lecture and silly here because I don't do anything to that whole deck. It is a constant. So I indicate that it's a constant and make sure I don't change it and then I don't need to put it in the setup. It only needs to happen one time. And now here's my test play cards where I am inheriting from the unit test test case. My tests, I'm going to do a test small, where I do a reporting dealer that is one player and one hand and report on it. That should be a list of one list. Little then, the len of it is one. We assert that's equal. Here I'm asserting that that one list has one item in it, and that will be one card. And so I'm saying the first element of the little, the length of it, is also one. And I'm being sure that that one card is in the whole deck. For my test zilch, I'm making a 0, 1 report. So that means that I have no players. And uh, one card? Well, it never gets to even using that one. But the no players means that I should have a list of nothing. So I assert that's equal. Here I'm doing a one player with no cards. So that should give me a list with an empty list in it. And if I have zero players and zero cards, I still have that list. 
with nothing in it. Didn't matter whether I asked it to do cards or not when you don't have any players. So I assert all those are equal. It's important when you're doing testing to look for the end cases and make sure they work. A lot of errors hide in the end cases. Our test hole dealer has nine people to deal to and six cards each. That's 54 cards. That's exactly how many cards we have in our deck because we have the 52 plus two jokers. So the report gives us all those hands, nine hands with six cards each. That's, that's a list of nine lists, each one having six cards in it. Now I'm going to assert that each of those hands that are in all the hands uh, do in fact have six cards in them and that how many hands there are are in fact nine. Now here's what I'm going to do now that I know about reduce. I'm doing exactly that reduce of x plus y of all the hands. x plus y when x and y are lists they just put them together in the same list. So with this reduce, I end up with all the cards in the deck. I sort them up, and then it better be exactly the same as the whole deck was in the beginning. Next, we have test too many, so we're going to be dealing 55 cards, 11 people, and 5 cards each. I again do that reduction so that I have all the cards in one list. Looking back at our deal hands in our game dealer, we see that when the stop iteration was raised, in other words, we were out of cards, we would give them a sorry card. So we expect to see the sorries over here. Our list of all the cards should be 66 long. So we look at that. But there should be sorry in there 12 times, subtracting our 54 from our 66. There should be 12 sorries. Now I'm going to go around 12 times removing any sorries. There should be none left. When I sort them, we should be back to the whole deck again. I see that this ran successfully. That's good. Okay, that's it for the unit test frameworks where we inherited from a class. Our next frameworks is going to be op parse where we instantiate a class. Okay, I'll see you when you're ready to move on.